and we are back thank you guys for joining me i hope you're all having an amazing day so today's video we need to talk about ian crossland and some of the bizarre insane things that he said a couple nights ago on the timcast irl podcast and i know i know ian always says bizarre insane strange things on the timcast irl podcast at the most random times but the other night was different and this actually changed my whole perspective and how i felt about ian and i think it did with a lot of other viewers as well by reading the super chats and the comments people were not impressed and we'll get into it before we do guys if you have not subscribed to the channel yet hit the subscribe button down below we have a goal of 1,000 subscribers and we are so close you can help us hit that goal join an amazing community here we got some of the best people on the youtubes in this community so hit that subscribe button leave me a thumbs up if you like the video and my favorite thing you guys already know is the comments leave me a comment let me know what you let me know what you guys think about this madness all right so let's get into it i've made some videos about ian in the past and you know just having fun some fun ones some bizarre ones ian's a he's a different character and listen I could make videos about Ian every day of the stuff that he says on the podcast, but I just like to switch it up every once in a while, you know, once a week, make a video about, about Ian and some of the bizarre ramblings. He says, this one's different. This one's different. He got a little deep and I think it was really, really strange. Turned a lot of people off. For example, someone actually paid a $100 super chat, $100 they sent to this in the super chat to say this. Ian's unwillingness to label evil as evil is itself evil. Get him off the show. He's an idiot. Then it says, buy Zcash. <laughs> so Tim read this super chat out loud. He left off the last part. So it, Tim read, Ian's unwillingness to label evil as evil is itself evil. Probably didn't want to make Ian feel bad, so he left off that last part. So this is what I'm talking about. Now, Ian did have his share of just strange outbursts and kind of showed you that he really doesn't know most of the time he doesn't know what these people are talking about for example i, I get a bunch of clips i'm going to show you guys and this first clip is just ian proving that he has absolutely no idea what the guests are talking about he's he seems so lost it's really bizarre to me now that I, okay let me let me re rewind it a second before I jump into these clips. So when I first started making these videos about Ian, I had some people saying, oh, I love Ian. He's great. You know, he adds so much to the show. I had other people saying, oh, I hate Ian. Get him off the show. He's useless. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then you had people in the middle, like myself, that were like, yeah, he can get annoying. He can make you want to pull your hair out. But he's kind of found his place on the show. That's fine. Well, like I said, my perspective has changed. And so... All right, so these first couple clips I'm going to show you guys is just proof that Ian really is out in the left field. We're punk rock. We are now the rebels. We're the anti-establishment. So weird, isn't it? We it's, have, it's <laughs> I love it. Last night we had Brandon Tatum on the show. Mm -hmm. um, officer Brandon Tatum, he's no longer a uh, police officer. And we were talking about running away from a fight. And it, he was saying where he grew up, you were thought of as a punk if you would turn and run. And he kept saying punk. And it crossed my mind a couple of times that like, yo, punk rock. It is punk to run away from a fight. That, that is absolutely 100% the opposite of what Brandon Tatum was saying. Complete opposite. How did... That's punk rock. No, 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 no. That's not what he was saying. He was saying you were getting punked. Like yeah, he was pranked. using the same word punk. And it's like that word. Has okay, so Tim understood what he was saying. Ian didn't have a goddamn, didn't have a clue. Synonym, bro. Sometimes that word has negative connotations, but in reality, it's cool to be punk. You, it's cool to turn and run and avoid a fight. Like no, that's no. punk rock, dude. A physical fight that's you can my choose point. to avoid. Yeah. A, 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 a okay, so Ian just proven that he just doesn't understand the context of what these people are saying. Just like this clip. You know what I would do if I was in Congress? I would create the two plus two equals four bill, and it would simply say Congress asserts that two plus two equals four. That's it. You gonna vote on it or not? Because they tried saying the woke people two plus two could equal five. I yeah. would I would probably true. filibuster that because in base three math there is no <laughs> numeral four. You only have zero, one, two. It's, it's three. always the geek. It's always the, they got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm the nerd. But this is this is exactly the 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 uh, uh, constructivist ideology. ideology. All right. So that's the first time Tim calls him a constructivist. 
All right, so that's real important because he brings it up in a few minutes when Ian starts getting really weird. So Ian's got to go against the grain and talk about 2 plus 2 equal in 5 or whatever, or not equal in 4. That I can change the definition in order to make you wrong, as opposed to admitting what we know is 2 plus 2 equals 4. You can change the context, but now you're arguing something totally different. It would be like if we were playing baseball, and I said, if I hit this ball 100 feet and it goes over that fence, it's a home run. You'd go, well, some fences are at 75 feet. Some are at 150 feet. I'm like, I didn't ask that. I'm talking about this fence right here. So what they're doing is they're going, well, 2 plus 2 could equal 5, because what if we're saying 2.4 plus 2.4, which is 4.8, which rounded up is 5? Well, you didn't say 2.4, did you? Based, so, so the point if is... If you said in base 10, <laughs> why would in I have base to? 5 or above, <laughs> 2 plus 2 equals 4, I cannot deny that. What average person is thinking in anything other than base 10 right now? Probably none of them, None of them. So this Maybe is the constructivist ideology, to change the definition to manipulate the results. Look so, at the best one. Okay. So you hear Ian changing the parameters of the discussion to fit his bizarre narrative. All right, so... That's just a couple of examples of Ian being Ian. All right, whatever. No problem. We can handle that. It happens in every Tim Cast IRL podcast that Ian's on. Now, Ian said something early on in the show that rubbed a ton of people the wrong way. And the comment section lit up. The super chats lit up. So let's listen to what Ian said early on that people weren't super thrilled with and then come out and tell you okay so first let me ask you ian do you think concentration camps are evil <sighs> that's a that's a big question i don't man. think it i don't think it's a hard question because i don't think you'll find a single human a single human who's going to agree when china denies what's going on with the Uyghur muslims they actively go no that's not happening here they're lying it's not true you know why if they thought it was good they'd say we absolutely do this but they know it's wrong, so they lie about it because everyone thinks well, it's like, wrong. All right, so you heard Ian couldn't, couldn't denounce concentration camps. So that's where that super chat that I just showed you guys came into play was kind of after that. And what happens from here on out, this is where it gets really bizarre. This is where I, my whole perspective was like, what? All right, how to put this nicely? I guess there's no way. I don't think Ian's playing with a full deck. I think there's something going on up there. He snaps. Now, this happened on other episodes of the Tim Cast IRL. When, Ho when Hotep Jesus was on there, he literally, he looked at Ian and said something like, not word, not word for word, this is a quote, but I said, you are one of the most negative human beings I've ever met. Like, you try to find the negative in everything. Every thing we're talking about, you try to find the negative to it. And it, it was true. And then there was, a there's been several episodes where he, explodes with anger like he's got this tick and he's he's got this switch it just flips and he explodes and i'm gonna show you a, in one of these clips he does the same thing listen it's scary ian is not the kind of guy i would want on my team i i personally i wouldn't want to be sleeping under the same roof as this guy because and, and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about when you hear the things he's saying i'm, I'm not sure like i said i've changed my stance on ian i'm not a big fan after this because if you can't call evil out for being evil, then I, I there's not a lot we can agree on. And without with Ian not understanding what the guests are talking about, for example, what he's saying about Brandon Tatum, um, I, I just don't understand what he's doing there. And listen, the comments, the comment section, the super chats, it was so crazy funny. People were saying, Ian, you're done. Get off the show. Tim, fire him. Get him off the show. What's he doing there? Um, Ian needs therapy. All kinds of people are saying Ian needs to go get professional help. Ian needs therapy. And listen, like I said before, I've made a couple videos. Is Ian playing a character? Because one time he's like, yeah, I'm just acting. This is, this is, I'm in character. But listen, he's not. He's not. So when I liked Tim Cast when Adam Krigler was on, I thought Adam was cool. He's kind of a, you know, he's, he's an interesting character, but I like Adam. I think he's, I think he found, you know, started to find himself on the podcast. And he's gone on and made his own podcast, which is fairly successful. I like Adam Krigler. I think he's a, I think he's a good dude. I liked it when Luke was on there for a, a, you know, a month or two, whatever. I like Luke being on there. Luke knew what he was talking about. Luke didn't agree all the time with Tim and the other guests. 
I like when, but I'm, I can't figure out why Ian's on there. So let's check out this back and forth between Tim and Ian. Tim calls him a constructivist again and explains why, and it makes so much sense to me. I completely agree with Tim on this, on this back and forth. And also, Tim says that people like Ian have a broken brain. It's so funny. So let's get into this uh, little back and forth. There's a couple different parts I'm going to play here. So this is the first part. All right. Let's see. Where are we at? Uh-oh. Samantha Fitzgerald says, Ian can't say concentration camps are evil. What the hell? Well, like, no. what's the difference? Concentration means that they're killing people. So the southern border aren't concentration camps. They're internment camps. Mm -hmm. I'd never, I mean, if you think of a concentration camp as a place where you put innocent people to kill them, then yeah, that's evil. But there then you got to go. define innocent because in a time of war, enemy civilians can be considered combatants. Bo Jess says, Ian, not everything is subjective. Lots of things are, are, are objectively bad. Stop being such a leftist. Well, then give me one. Objectively Here we go. Objectively bad? Yeah. Johnny Arson says, Murder, but not in war. That's not murder. That's not murder. All you got to do is sign on a piece of paper and it's no longer murder. That's still not murder. What? So if someone says it's okay to kill, then it's okay? Ian, do, do you think like war is fought because someone's like, you know, I just feel like killing? Sometimes. What's happening? All right. So this is the start of a back and forth that goes on for a while that Ian gets really weird. So, but there's a couple things in between that, whatever, we'll skip through. And if any of you guys were watching the podcast and were just seeing the comments in the super chats, oh my god, people were pe seriously, people are just like, Ian is the dumbest human being on the planet. Ian needs to get help. Ian is someone said Ian's. I don't know. It was crazy. It, it, and listen, just listen to what he says. This this gets crazy. How, 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 how about how about how about selling drugs to kids, like Adderall? No, 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 like, like street drugs, like hard narcotics, hard opiates, fentanyl. Okay, there's the first example. Tim says, how about selling drugs to kids? That's it, just, how about selling drugs to kids? Ian, constructivist, uh, like Adderall? Like, uh, what? I mean, Adderall's a hard narcotic, or a hard opiate. I asked you. No, Adderall's not a hard opiate. Adderall is a methamphetamine that they prescribe, usually it's prescribed to, uh, you know, kids, teenagers for ADHD and things like that. It's a methamphetamine based. I don't know the exact compound of it, but it's basically meth in a pill form that's legal for the government to prescribe. Anyway, it's neither here nor there, but he keeps doing this. It's you about fentanyl, Ian. Fentanyl? No, that's... You don't think it's evil to it give a kid fentanyl? Yeah, I think that would be... Well... Is yeah, that objectively I, evil? I think so. I it's think, it's I just, think you, be, yeah. you've laid me a very vague situation. You asked if there are some things that are objectively evil. As a painkiller, a tiny, tiny, tiny dose. I didn't of say that. No, 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 no. Okay. Selling drugs to kids. Would you That's say it vague. is evil for it? Okay. So this is where Ian starts adding his own parameters. Tim's not saying any. This is really weird. Dude, to grab a seven-year-old by the hair and jam a lethal dose of fentanyl down his throat and hold his mouth shut. Yeah, but what if the seven-year-old had a grenade in his hand and was coming up to you to blow you up? Then did I ask you? Then it's self-defense, and it's not did evil. I, did I ask you, did, you if you, you had a grenade? You didn't define the situation properly. Ian, you're a constructivist. <laughs> no, I'm you're saying that things are subjective in reality. You are wrong, because no one oh, gave killing. you those parameters. Killing is, killing is always wrong, unless it's right. Is that what you're saying? No, what, you, what you're oh, doing is... is look at Ian. He, just re look, he gets real evil looking. Oof. It's definitely right sometimes. Sometimes it would be wrong to not kill. You see, Ian, what you don't understand, because you're a constructivist, is that when I lay out the parameters, you've decided to change the parameters. You said to kill a kid. I said a guy grabs a seven-year-old yeah. by the back of the hair and shoves a lethal dose of fentanyl down his throat and holds his mouth shut. Sure. Is that evil? Well, is the, he a soldier in Vietnam? I didn't, I didn't tell you, you that. Didn't, no, you didn't tell me Does that. Does it matter? It does matter. Context no. matters. No, Ian, Ian. What you're... Wow. Someone just uh, triggered Ian. Ugh. And he's done that a lot. Just that freak out screaming. And listen, I know a, lo I know a lot of times Ian's on there to be Tim's punching bag. But this isn't one of those cases. You're doing is you're changing the parameters because you can't you accept Because you wrong. didn't give me any, so I'm creating them. So... If you watched a guy on the street walk up to a seven-year-old, pull his hair back, and shove fentanyl down his throat, you'd say, maybe it's a good thing. Well, now you've given me some parameters. No, that doesn't sound like a good thing. What, what, what parameters did I give you? 
that it was on the street. I pictured New York City. But what if the kid the day, was a terrorist, Ian? Well, if it comes why, out why that he was, why did you then remove then the comes parameters? Out, maybe he did do a good thing. Oh, okay. Thing. So you just said it was wrong. The pro- see the problem with it constructivism. It seemed like it, but I'm not going to throw the guy. In, I'm the not going to problem gonna, like, with constructivism judge, jury, and, executioner. and the things you do in arguments like this is that you could be asked a simple question and you decide to change the argument Dude, to the, suit your. The needs. reason we have courts is because we don't know if it's right and wrong at first glance. What, what first glance? We have to look into things and find out context and see maybe sure. this, what looked evil wasn't. That's to decide punishment. That's not to decide whether it was right or wrong. Well, sometimes we're deciding they, they, whether or not we're going to punish someone for you, what they did. It was objectively right or wrong when they did it. And that's the difference is, is you have to be able to say some things are objectively evil at the point they're happening. And I would just say if I was going to kill a seven-year-old terrorist, I wouldn't dose him with fentanyl. The point is, <laughs> there are very obviously things that are objectively evil that no human would agree with unless they're unless they're broken in the head. I don't know, man. Destruction is such a way of life for humans. <laughs> unless they're broken in the head. I think Ian's broken in the head. That we've kind of accepted it. And, and it just depends on who you ask. You know, you know what I hear when you say these things, Ian? You are you, you have have evil tendencies that you've expressed before that you want to justify. I'm, it might. Bingo. I think he, Tim just nailed it on that. I completely agree with what Tim just said. Oof. My, my core, I'm a philosopher, and I understand that it's, it's too easy to say something is blatantly right, blatantly wrong, without taking context into account. But okay, you, you asked. Can do that Hold on. You can look at some things and say this is immediately, objectively wrong in the context that I see right now. I think there are situations, yeah, Ian. like if you see someone put their hand on a, on a burner and start screaming, I would take their hand off the burner. Ian. I would think that. What does that have any, if someone puts their hand on a burner, what does that have anything to do with evil? That's a person doing something to themselves. That's got nothing to do with anything. That's the most, I think that's probably the most bizarre thing he could have said at that moment. If someone puts their hand on a burner, like, who, who, if someone wants to do that to themselves, that's up to them. What? That's bad. You asked, are there things that are objectively evil? The answer is yes. When I gave you an example, you changed the argument in order to justify someone being evil. Do you understand? That's constructivism. If a guy walked up, how about that dude in New York who drove up to a guy who was walking with his four-year-old daughter, shot, daughter, shot him and killed him? Is that evil? What happened? A guy was crossing a crosswalk with his four-year-old daughter and a car pulled up, stopped the guy, pulled up. Okay, at this point, the uh, comment section super chats were lighting up. People were livid. People were absolutely furious. The guy oh, shot the guy and killed him. Yeah, it sounds awful. Objectively evil? I wasn't there, man. It sounds awful. You can't say that it's objectively evil to randomly gun down a man with his four-year-old daughter just crossing the street minding his own business. Do you see the well, problem with, evil, with that? You gotta, evil's you, vague Ian, as hell, dude. You, you are the banality it. of evil. You define the banality of evil. No. I mean, you define. Wow. <laughs> but now he's the banality of evil. How can I even defend that, that bland, vague statement? What does that even mean? The banality Why of evil. Why are you looking for context that would justify it as opposed to saying absent context that doesn't justify it? It is evil. Because I've seen people do horrible things in the name of good. The banality of evil was when the Nazis didn't care what they were doing. Because there must have been some justification for the orders they were given. That's your mentality, not mine. And gun down a man with his daughter, and this happened in New York, I say, that is evil. Now, after the fact, we can investigate and try and figure things out. But based on what we witnessed and what we saw, it was an act of evil. Even if this dad had wronged this guy in some way, even if he was an angry, violent person or a gang member, pulling up in a car and then gunning a guy down in cold blood and broad daylight with his four-year-old daughter is evil. Pure evil. And I can say that. And let's just add the context that the person was not doing anything that justified them being killed. They were not in a situation where killing them was an act of self-defense or anything else. It was just a purely evil thing to do. Right. I think it, you can... Then you, then you could say... Then your arguments move. But the, it's, it no if longer becomes objective if you start to define all the parameters. Now you're creating a subjective situation. No, no, no. What you're doing is you're trying to justify evil by changing parameters that were never no, given to I'm you. No, I'm saying that killing a child is not objectively evil. If the kid's going to kill you, then you and you kill him in self-defense, it's not evil. But the, you're, you're but adding you're saying you parameters. Tim's asking, can you create one situation that is objectively evil? I, I think about this a lot. Can. I think about objectivity and subjectivity a lot. We've had this argument in private sometimes. It's I love this argument. But 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I think it's very dangerous to, to, to lie and die on a hill where you believe something always is this way. That's not what we said. You asked for one situation that, in which something no, could be objectively No, I didn't. Evil. I said that I don't think there are situations like that. So there's one example. A guy pulling up to a man walking down the street with his four-year-old daughter and shooting him and killing him for no reason. And it happened. It happened in New York last year. That's Random evil. act of violence. We don't, don't know why. It's the guy hard. just decided to kill a man in front of his child. And the little girl... Not hard to say that's evil. That's an evil, evil act in front of your child. Even if that guy had done something... You don't do it when he's there with his four-year-old daughter. That's going to scar a kid for life. That's evil regardless of... <sighs> I had to run with, with her dad dying in the street. She had to run panicking. Sorry, man. Some things are evil. You see, the problem is... You know, I, 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 I was just watching Star Trek. It's fantastic. All right. I don't want to hear about uh, Tim and his Star Trek. Um, all right. So that whole back and forth with Tim and Ian changed my whole perspective on Ian and... Uh, and I, I, I think the guy's got a broken brain. I don't know. My stance before was, yeah, he's kind of found his place at the table. You know, he fits in now. He changes things up a little bit. But I, I don't know. And listen, there's one more clip I want to play for you guys that that uh, Ian said something about that just it shows his his. Br I don't. Okay, hang on. All right. So this is a clip where. People were really pissed off again. Good. Someone, we'll someone, someone made a statement, but I'm going to ask this question for the Super Chat. Ian, if you had a time machine, would you kill baby Hitler? No. You I thought a lot about that, too. Yeah, because <laughs> something much worse may have come about. Oh, he was a product point. of his times in many ways. See, once again, going into the something much worse come about instead of, well, from the what you just gave me, could I do that and stop the horrible, horrible things that he did? Yeah, of course I would stop the horrible things that he did. He's got to look for something worse. What if he just, what if he just, what, what if he just, like, like hobbled, hobbled him? him. Might, Might have been even worse. worse. <laughs> he was Sorry, already kind of hobbled. The, 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 the idea that doing something, or not doing something because something worse might happen, is a gutless move. There are times when, I mean, it's the trolley paradox. All right, if you, I'm not going to do the trolley paradox, what if I do it, it derails 100,000 people get killed. You know, you, know, you, you make, make the, the decision, decision based on the context of the situation you're in. And if you have the opportunity to go and stop evil, you should stop that evil, regardless of whether the potential that it could be worse exists. Maybe, though, Mussolini would have conquered more of Africa and Europe, and then the Japanese would have taken Russia, and there wouldn't have been a reason for the United States to get involved with Britain, and then it would be a Or maybe the Japanese. Bavarians would have just drunk more or beer. beer with uh. <laughs> all right all right that's it so those are the clips i wanted to show you guys i listen this, this seriously changed my whole perspective on this guy i don't I, I don't know why he's on the show all right before i was like okay it's good to have someone that doesn't know what's going on to ask the questions and stuff but i don't think he's okay like i literally don't think he's okay in the head i think he's i think tim explained it pretty well through that back and forth let me know what you guys think and i know there's some people that have watched my other uh ian you know ian crossland videos that and i don't you know ian says some crazy things on here and it's fun to talk about him it's fun to show him that's fine um but i've had people say yeah i love ian i think he's great for the show so let me know what you guys think do you guys think that back and forth do you guys agree with the majority of the viewers on the timcast irl that night that were just saying, get ready, Ian. He's got to get off the show. Tim's got to fire him after this. This guy's insane. This guy's lost his mind. He's got a broken brain. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, because I don't... Definitely not a fan. That stuff was real creepy, the things he was saying. All right, like I said, if you haven't subscribed, let's hit that thousand subscriber mark, and leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this whole back and forth with Ian and Tim, and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time, peace.